Welcome back to AgriTalk, our final segment here at the Missouri State Fair in Sedalia, Missouri. Tomorrow we will be at the Illinois State Fair in Springfield, Illinois, at the Commodities Pavilion right across from the grandstand. It's Agriculture Day tomorrow at the Illinois State Fair. If you're going to be in that area, hope you'll join us. All right, J.P. Dunn is with us, Field Services Director for the Missouri Soybean Association. J.P., thanks for joining us. Lots to talk about. First of all, biodiesel being used here on the fairground. That's right. We have several uh, testimonials um, where we're using 20% biodiesel in all the trans. Um, John Deere's provided the tractors that are pulling the trams around the fairgrounds this year, and they agreed to uh, let us run 20% in there, which uh, the checkoff is providing that funding for, as well as the track maintenance equipment for all the motorsports events and the the tractor-pulling sleds that will be out in front of the crowds uh, all night long uh, tonight, and they were last night and and on Wednesday as well. Uh, Those are running on 20%. And then we actually have some of the competitors that are utilizing a a performance fuel called Pure Purple that is 20% biodiesel. It goes without saying, uh, we need that biodiesel tax incentive reinstated. It is really crippling the industry. It makes a world of difference. We have about 150 million gallons of capacity here in Missouri, and we're running at about uh, half of that currently with three plants open here in the state. And uh, that dollar blenders credit makes a world of difference. And it's needed until energy prices creep up again on us, which we know they will at some point, um, or until the renewable fuel standard really kicks in. We've been talking uh, on this show and in past shows uh, with different folks. Uh, we had Karen Strange on earlier. John Clybaker jo- talked a little bit about it as well. The, uh, the challenge for um, Missouri agriculture, the pet uh, industry as well, about the ballot initiative that looks like now it will go through, uh, that will be on the ballot come November. And it can be very misleading, very deceiving of people thinking they, they might be voting to fix what, uh, we know is a problem with uh, unlicensed breeders doing things they should not be doing, but people need to understand what they are voting on. And I know your uh, Missouri Soybean Association here at the State Fair, you're certainly involved in an educational process. That's right. You know, besides the promotion work we're doing, you know, with biodiesel, um, it's also very important for us, you know, to get the message to soybean farmers that animal agriculture is our number one customer, and we need to be doing everything that we can to create a positive environment to grow uh, the livestock industry here in the state. And our booth at the State Fair is actually the Missourians for uh, Animal Care booth. And uh, all of our commodity organizations and Farm Bureau have gone together, you know, to fight this ballot initiative that, that you mentioned there, Proposition B, which will be on that November ballot. And it, it's critical, you know, to us in the soybean industry because we want to make sure that uh, we have hogs and, and chickens and turkeys to eat that soybean meal that results from uh, the, the crush. You know, when we create demand for soybean oil for bio diesel. Um, that means we're going to crush more soybeans here in the state. We want to add value to the meal and to the holes um, you know, that comes out of those processing facilities. And uh, 100% of our holes go to feed dairy cattle and beef cattle, and 95% of our meal goes to feed hogs and, and poultry. And so uh, we're very much dependent on animal agriculture, and it's for that reason that uh, we want to educate the public about who HSUS is, you know, the threat that they present to Missouri agriculture and uh, and at the same time try to educate the public on uh, how important it is to to make sure that we maintain a, a viable livestock industry here in Missouri whether it be the economics of you know growing corn and soybeans or whether it be from providing a safe and abundant food supply all right thanks JP thank you J.P. Dunn, uh, Field Services Director for the Murray, Missouri Soybean Association. And finally joining us is uh, Becky Frankenbach. She is Director of Communications for the Missouri Corn Growers. Well, let's kind of wrap all this up. I know uh, you, Missouri Corn Growers is a big part of the um, the coalition with uh, Missouri Agriculture with that Farmers Feed Us campaign that's been so successful and now working to educate people about this ballot initiative. That's absolutely right, Mike. What this all comes down to, and I think what all the partners in agriculture are saying is, Together, collectively, nationally, and on a state level, on a commodity level, and on an individual farmer level, it is more important now than ever to win the hearts and minds of the American consumer. That is the ultimate goal here. And the more that we tell them our story, the more that we can talk about how we're growing more using less and the abundant food supply that we all enjoy, the more that we get that message out, the stronger we will be as an, as an industry. It's it's been good to see the the campaign to uh, to educate people. Uh, how how have you been able to track how it's resonating with people? You've been able to get any feel for that? 
you know, word of mouth is a really good tool that um, tells us whether or not people are excited about the campaign, if they're talking about it. And we're hearing from both our producers, both the corn farmers as well as some of the other partners in the in the St. Louis Cardinals stepping up to the plate campaign. But we're also getting a lot of feedback from consumers and on the website, um, MissouriFarmersCare.org. So whenever you whenever you see that kind of feedback on online and when people are starting to talk about it, you know they're excited about it. And the stepping up to the plate with the St. Louis Cardinals, it's a major campaign. We said we wanted to do something that was major league, and boy, is this campaign getting out there, reaching millions of people with a positive, and you said it earlier, pro-ag message, and that's exactly where we need to be headed. Tell us about that website again, and what will people see at that website? If you go to FarmersCare.org, you'll be able to visit a farmer, go to their website, um, tour their farm, visit their wife, meet their children or their husband, as the case may be, and sign up to win the ultimate at-home tailgate party. That's also a nice little plus. You can sign up to win a flat-screen TV, a new gas grill, and $750 in free groceries. But the key is you have to go through the process to actually learn about that farm family and what goes on on a farm. It's putting that face on agriculture. It's building that trust and building that confidence and knowing who is producing your food. You look at how Michael Poland is moving forward in his food movement, and you see the traction that he's making. People want to know where their food is coming from, and if we don't tell that story, someone else will. Yeah, if to if to the consumer, their food is coming from some unknown, unfaced giant out there in their perception, or that's what people try to create in their minds. Well, then they're more apt to have a negative connotation or believe negative things. But when it comes down and they see a family, when they see those individuals, they know that uh, who that is, that face that they can put to it, that makes a big difference because I think there's still a basic trust for farmers, but they want to know who they are and what they're doing and why they're doing it. Exactly right. And once you tell them that story, that trust level is there. Farmers need to say, we are the best in the world at doing what we do. Let us do our job. And we need to be saying that collectively as organizations, but as farmers, too. They have the trust level, and that's who consumers really want to meet. I, I read in one of the, the surveys, you know, some of the research that I see that 60% of the people in the U.S. want to meet a farmer. You know, for us that, that live and work in this industry, that's kind of funny, but there really are celebrities that have a voice that people want to hear. So now, between now and November, is a critical time to, to educate people. This ballot initiative, as we've been saying, could be very misleading, and uh, I think the fear is people are going to vote for could vote for something thinking they're solving a problem, and really that's not what this is about. They could be doing something unintended consequences. I guess what we're concerned. Exactly, and what people they need to understand what they're voting on, like you said, and understand who HSUS really is. We talked about this earlier. You know, people send in 1995 a month thinking they're saving a puppy or a kitten, when in reality they're supporting a major lobbying and fundraising organization. That's their goal. That's what they're good at. So we need to get the facts out on who they are and who they should trust, and that trust should lie in the American farmer. Big difference between animal care and animal and control of animal ownership, and that's really what this is about. It is. It is. There's a fine line there, and it's a slippery slope. Don Nicodem with the Pork Association likes to say, take out the D for dog and in place, put in an H, and you've got hog. So we are very concerned, and we are watching it, and it is an issue that we are up front and ready to fight. All right. Thanks, Becky. Thank you, Mike. All right, that is uh, Becky Frankenbach uh, with the Missouri Corn Growers, and that wraps it up from here at the Missouri State Fair. Off to the Illinois State Fair tomorrow in Springfield, Illinois. Hope you'll join us. Thanks for being with us today on AgriTalk, the voice of rural America.